Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features Weapon X number one, cover dated March 1995, and this is the first Age of Apocalypse version of Wolverine's title, cover here by series artist Adam Kubert, inking himself, always I prefer when an artist um, who's capable of inking their own work as well does that and so this is an excellent looking cover and we get a nice look at the redesign of Wolverine and Jean Grey's costumes so this is very much a reconfiguration of Wolverine's patch outfit and also of course distinctively he's missing one of his hands and in this issue we'll find out the origin of that also this clock face that they're inside it'll be revealed inside the issue that this is big ben in london the runes of big ben that they are in so let's open this one up to the first page larry hama of course is the ongoing writer of uh, wolverine solo title and he chooses to begin this story in medias res in the middle of things so we're right into the action and we've got uh, wolverine and uh, jean gray on top of this sentinel and they're making their way to um, apocalypse's atlantic seawall by which he protects um, his north america from um, invasion by uh, humans including their sentinels so uh, this picks up from a little episode included in um, X-Men Alpha where Wolverine and Jean brought uh, information to the Human High Council which is headquartered in London and um, the Human High Council has asked the pair to take on this mission. And so here we see them on screen here from within a control center and these um, infinites are... Um, are concerned about what they might be up to because they are specifically alpha class renegade mutants so one of them says two alphas alert central lord apocalypse must be notified um, but one of the others disagrees and says rouse the high lord over one piddling sentinel you want us all sent to the camps or worse yet the recycling vat so we're learning about the uh the various uh aspects of this dystopian world um, ruled by Apocalypse, at least North America anyway. And so the title of this story is Unforgiven Trespasses. And the creative team there, Larry Harma, Script, Adam Kubert, Breakdowns, Carl Kaisel, Dan Green, Chris Warner, Finishes, Pat Brousseau, Lettering, and Mike Thomas, Colouring. And um, what I want to note here is it's a little disappointing that Adam Kubert uh, wasn't able to produce full pencils for this issue. But... Um, it is also a little disappointing too that we have such a range of inkers handling the finishes because if an artist provides breakdowns you want some consistency with the finishes of the art in ink and really the uh, number one inker here is Dan Green and so it's a pity that Dan wasn't able to do the entire um, issue himself. I will point out when he comes on board we start off with Carl Kaisel's inking uh, to begin with. So that's pretty nice work by um, excuse me, Adam Kubert here on these um, 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 structures that uh, form and, and um, amount to Apocalypse's seawall. So as we read through it, we learn more about the nature of um, the world and the seawall. But this is a really cool shot of uh, the Sentinel. Uh, so we've got a nice angle on it from behind, foreshortened by Adam Kubert and uh, Wolverine and Jean Grey. Uh, riding on the shoulders of the sentinel as they're being um, attacked by these various weapons uh, weapon systems of the seawall structures so turn the page over it like this thing is moving um, at a pace here Larry Hama uh, really uh, focused on the action to begin this issue and we're just learning about aspects of the world via the dialogue between Wolverine and um, Jean Grey so um, what we learn in particular is that uh, the Sentinel has been programmed to override structural preservation procedures and so it smashes into one of these seawall structures saying here this unit has been prioritized to deliver two mutants with temporary termination amnesty to Mid-Atlantic Seawall Section 5 Radar Control Center at all costs. So Gene says here, um, you did your job Sentinel, you got us here, now it's up to Logan and me to finish the mission. But Wolverine says, did you catch what the big lug said? He said our termination amnesties were temporary. The High Council sure knows how to keep it close to the vest. So that's the human High Council back in London. And then Jean says, we agreed to do this mission for them. 
while they were making up their minds about the information we brought them. And again, that's a reference to an episode in X-Men Alpha. So Wolverine here says, he's just griping. Did you memorize the schematics to this pile of stainless steel? Because he's going to make his way to the control center in order to take down uh, the defense system. So uh, Gene says, yeah, straight down, seven levels, Logan. And so Logan rips his way through the structure down to the seventh level where he's uh, on his way to the seventh level where he's met by this. And I really like the uh, kind of terminology here that uh, Larry Hamm has come up with. A Balrog class meta cyborg, something cobbled together by Apocalypse's main goon, Sinister, in an extra large genetic processing tank. So as ever, we have uh, Wolverine's uh, first person narration here. Larry Hama always used that device in the Wolverine solo title. And uh, we're with uh, Chris Warner on inks at this point. So Wolverine is lashing out at uh, the tentacles of this Balrog, uh, J.R. Tolkien reference there, class meta cyborg. And um, he is taking it apart, eat adamantium and die. Um, he shouts, then Jean arrives to help him with a side blast and um, she has come to assist Wolverine despite um, his protests and she says to him, our window of opportunity is closing fast and a telekinetic burst seemed to be the only way to keep on, on a schedule. So he replies, when you're right, pretty lady, you're right. So they're an item in this um, alternative universe. And we'll learn what the origin of their uh, love story is. Also at this point, Dan Green comes on the inks for a fair few pages. And it makes a difference to the quality of the art. So um, there is a new arrival on the seawall station. And um, it is an alpha mutant. And who will it turn out to be? Except for Havoc. And he lets rip with one of his plasma blasts, which take which he launches at the sentinel that brought Wolverine and Jean to the seawall. And he said he's um, angry here that he was uh, transported there to deal with one paltry uh, sentinel. But it's interesting what he says before that. Where he says, "You had me go through molecular disincorporation, risk the EM distortion wave." and risk cellular mapping reconstruction to deal with one paltry sentinel. So we'll see all of that um, come into effect uh, for Havoc a little later in the issue. So he says, I thought this was an emergency. And the infinites here say, uh, they are, there are also two alpha class renegades, prelate. They're heading down to the control center. So that's got Havoc's attention and concern. Two alphas, he says, and you didn't transmit a code red to Lord Apocalypse. You'll all be lucky to be recycled as toxic waste handler drones. So that's pretty funny. And then here with this uh, long vertical panel, we pick up with uh, Jean and Wolverine as they make their way down five, six, down to level seven. So Jean is picking up on the on uh, Havoc's side pattern. And she says here, it's an incredibly familiar uh, uh, pattern and very very dangerous so Wolverine um, infers that they must have called in a heavy hitter I thought I saw a transport beam antenna up there um, so um, Gene says they should split up that he's got to keep going and take the control center and take out the control center for this sector of the seawall and she'll handle or she'll hold the line and Wolverine promises that he's going to come back for her and she says I know you will Logan, or she whispers it rather, and then Havoc arrives. This is a great um, upshot of Havoc with um, excellent foreshortening by um, Adam Kubert. But um, yeah, and the inks on this one are by Dan Green, and it looks good. So then we continue with Wolverine. Again, the action just isn't stopping um, in this issue so far. And uh, he launches himself into the control center with his adamantium claw and he takes down these infinites they line up he says here i'm sending i'm he, uh, he is what he says here is i'm going to send everyone to scrap city i couldn't get better help if i asked infinites they line up to get ripped and they point out the target so he takes out the control center then we pick up with um Havoc and Jean, and we get a little bit of backstory on Jean in this reality. Where is he, breeder sow? Uh, he asks her, where's your disgusting little paramour? 
and uh, she asks why do you want him do you want him to gouge your eye out so you and your brother can be a matching set and he replies for a DNA repository you've got wit too bad I have to and then Wolverine drops in right on the back of Havoc's neck so it's interesting so Jean was um, a prisoner in Mr. Sinister's genetic pens and he was using her for his experimentation and of course that matches um, his interest in Jean Grey in um, the normal universe as well but he's primarily interested in Scott Summers and we'll see a lot more about that in Factor X number one so as I said Wolverine drops in a little color error there where his teeth are colored in blue but however we'll pass by that and Wolverine says you're not the Summers brother I really want to stomp but you're the one who's here I might just leave enough of you to go crawling back to Mr. One-Eye Cyclops' payback for this missing hand of mine. So, in this dystopian Age of Apocalypse reality, Wolverine has taken out one of Scott Summers' eyes, and Scott took out Wolverine's hand. But it does raise the question, where are the retractable claws? Are they not in his forearm? Could they not pop out of this metallic um, uh, glove? Um, or gauntlet that he's wearing on his forearm. It's strange, um, but we will get answers to that later in the Age of Apocalypse um, series of issues. So, Gene grabs uh, Logan he's, and uh, doesn't allow him to finish off Havoc, and they make their way back to the Sentinel that is still functional. Uh, Gene says there's no time for revenge. The Sentinel has been fighting a hold a holding action while implementing a self-repair program. Um, so... Wolverine says it looks like the repairs ain't keeping up with the damage so they get back on board the back of the Sentinel really nice shot of the Sentinel there by uh, Kubert and um, Havoc of course is back up and it's a mistake that Wolverine didn't kill him as he sees it so Havoc's getting ready to blast them with his uh, plasma blasts he boasts here that he's going to reduce them to composite molecules but what happens this is really cool what happens here is the Sentinel's hands fly off, grab Havoc, put him into the transporter unit and uh, program it to teleport him out of there. And Wolverine says, hope it's where the sun don't shine, darling, to Jean. Looks like we're going against the traffic today. So we've got all these Sentinels arcing towards the seawall um, and uh, the, the gap in the seawall to make their way to North America. And Gene makes the point, it's the great airlift, Logan. So the whole plan there by the Human High Council is to airlift out of the USA, uh, which is um, under Apocalypse's control, all remaining humans and friendly mutants to Europe. And um, that story gets told in Amazing X-Men number one because Rogue and her band of X-Men are there to um, help with that and take on um, Holocaust. This is a great... Uh, one page panel here with uh, Wolverine and Jean aboard the back of the Sentinel as all of these other ones come towards North America. Um, so Jean here says, what very well may be the last hope for the humans left in Apocalypse's empire. That's the airlift. Look at it, Logan. Sentinels and transports as far as the eye can see. The Europeans reaching out to our people. Doesn't it give you hope? And Wolverine says, all them folks ain't safe in Europe yet, darling, and neither are we for that matter. So, um, yeah, it's a grim reality, this Age of Apocalypse. And speaking of whom, we switch to across the Atlantic um, into the domain of Apocalypse. His headquarters are in Manhattan, the island of Manhattan. Uh, so we have a little kind of uh, uh, map here of uh, the globe with this, the Atlantic seawall running right down the middle of it and we have Apocalypse um, giving instructions regarding the seawall that he wants hollow displays um, of rectified situations not ongoing failures and then he uh, addresses Cyclops here who says as far as we can tell and as incredible as this sounds Sinister has transmitted vital information about your plans to the Human High Council via two mutant couriers and that is Wolverine and uh, Jean and again that's all referenced in X-Men Alpha number one. I really like the design here on Apocalypse's um, uh, ready room or war room here. Uh, really nice work by Kubert. Um, Apocalypse isn't too worried and um, he's got a plan which he won't share with uh, Scott Summers regarding 
uh, what he's got to do about Sinister and the whole business in Europe. And then we've got these, um, the, the horsemen in this particular reality, main one here, Holocaust. Um, he's got that really cool design. And also what turns out is that Havoc uh, melded in the transport um, in the transport back to Manhattan with uh, the Sentinel Hand and they fused on a molecular level. So here we've got the Dark Beast that's working on him with a bone saw and that's got to be pretty painful. So Apocalypse tells him nonetheless do what you have to do. So a one-handed mutant? Now who could that be? Have you the foggiest clue, Holocaust? Your voice tires me a bit, says Holocaust. We all know that's the very one that Summers has been keeping an eye out for. So these horsemen with their uh, gallows and grim sense of humor mocking uh, Cyclops. And here we get it. Like Logan shouts Cyclops, I swear I'll rip his heart out. And we get to see the scars over his uh, missing eye from Wolverine's claws. So Apocalypse says here... Um, he gets it now that the Couriers must have been Weapon X and Jean Grey. Could they be the Couriers? Fortunately, I've already roiled that particular pool. And here we pick up with Wolverine and Jean Grey as they kiss. And we see that the Sentinel has landed right in the clock face of Big Ben in London. And Jean says to uh, Logan, you're too quiet. What are you brooding about? And he says that Sentinel didn't get us all the way back to London just so as we could take in the sights. I'm thinking we ought to go downstairs and see what the High Council is up to. So, of course, uh, Big Ben is um, a clock tower on um, the Houses of Parliament. So that is the uh, Human High Council headquarters. And here they are. So they're, they've been revealed already, their membership. Uh, in X-Men Alpha number one. So we've got um, Emma Frost, we've got Brian Braddock, and we've got Bolivar Trask, and also Moira McTaggart, who is his wife in this dystopian reality. And they're here um, talking about the fact that they now have the opportunity to uh, bring uh, the airlift, the humans, uh, to Europe. And also... Um, yeah, this is the airlift, the point that's been made here. And the Sentinels have been manufactured by Braddock Enterprises, so uh, by Brian Braddock. So that's interesting. And now Moira makes the point. It is now up to the Human High Council to end the threat of apocalypse once and for all, and by any means necessary. I like this shot here. So we've got uh, Dan Green back on the inks for these two pages. It looks really good. And I just like the, uh, the brush work on uh, defining um, Brian's... Uh, cheekbone here just a simple detail a screen tone as well really nice work by Dan Green just excellent work so she Moira makes the point uh, that it's now time to end the threat of apocalypse once and by all once and for all and by any means necessary so Brian is a hawk here in relation to this uh, strategy and says now we're talking Wolverine 2 is applauding um, from up the, uh, the stairway looking down. These geeks are finally so showing some gumption, he says, but Jean doesn't like it. And why is that? She thinks that, um, well, she, she doesn't just say it yet. Um, Wolverine says, these numb noodles didn't even raise an eyebrow when a sentinel plowed into their attic and they ain't even acknowledging our presence. I say it's high time they shook the gloves and she says to him, keep it down, will you? I want to hear more. So we hear more. And who is also a member of the Human High Council, except for Mariko Yashida? So in the, in the uh, normal reality, Wolverine's um, fiancé and dead uh, since issues uh, 56 to 58 of Wolverine's title, um, the last Mark Silvestri issues where she uh, was killed. Um, but alive here, and also something we learn in Astonishing X-Men number one is that Japan has been completely uh, wiped out by Holocaust. There is no humans left there. But Mariko here is more of a dove where she says, not everyone is in agreement with this doomsday strike against North America. So Wolverine is surprised by that. And Brian as, as I said earlier, is the hawk about it. He says, I've had it up to here with Mariko's whining. We have transcended the mere civilities of war. It is kill them all now 
or wait to be killed and I for one won't and then they're interrupted by the arrival of as it turns out magma um, of the new mutants in the normal reality and she now is an agent of uh, apocalypse and um, she's there to uh, take out the human high council that's what apocalypse had planned and he wouldn't share with uh, cyclops and so magma launches um, a magma blast at brian braddock um, does it kill him well we'll find out shortly and then she says the name is magma braddock and i am but we hear here or we see here on the edge of the page a familiar sound effect snicked so wolverine has taken her out here what a great anchor image and again this one is inked by uh dan green as well great anchor image here and uh he kills her and she says very good logan but do not delude yourself there will be others my life is nothing and this is an interesting bit as well so logan's arm is on fire from penetrating magma's back and he says no sweat the healing factor will kick in when the flames die down and the adamantium cools off so a tough guy as ever in this uh, new universe what a great two pace spread here by Kubert and the inks on this one I think might be um, it's either Carl Kazel or Chris Warner um, on this one I don't think that this is uh, Dan Green actually and here um, Braddock survived the assassination attempt by Magma and he is convinced now, doubly convinced of his stratagem. Isn't this enough? Isn't this attack enough to prove my point? He asks, don't you understand that we have no choice? We must institute Project Scorched Earth. We have the will. And, uh, and here he says, Apocalypse wants a brave new world for his filthy kind. So be it. And now, my friends, we have the means. But his precious domain will be nothing but a radioactive wasteland. And Wolverine is on board for that. He says, go for it, Braddock. But Jean is um, uncertain. And she says, you don't know what you're saying, Logan. This is the beginning of a descent into madness. So this is the ultimate plan of the Human High Council to deal with Apocalypse, to nuke him. And look at this massive ship that they have in order to do the job so really really excellent issue by larry hama just never let the pace drop on the storytelling in this we had action we had violence and we had a version of wolverine that's pretty similar pretty close minus the cosmetic details of a missing hand in a different costume to the wolverine that we're familiar with from um, our regular reality so interesting to say that like characters like havoc are completely different because of being brought up by sinister but logan here wolverine um, has pretty much the character he does in in the regular reality um, so nature versus nurture or nurture versus nature that kind of theme is um, uh, played with um, in the course of the age of apocalypse um, series and it's interesting to see how different characters um, turn out in that world because of the death of Charles Xavier 20 years earlier so there you go I do hope that you enjoyed this uh, review and commentary on Weapon X number one uh, if you did so please like the video on YouTube and if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this